I'm Dr. Michelle Plaster, and you're listening to Between Two White Coats, a weekly podcast where we dig into key issues surrounding health and wellness. I'm a family medicine doctor, and my co-host, Amber Foster, is a family medicine nurse practitioner. In our combined 30 years in medicine, we've seen a lot. We are taking some of our biggest questions, obstacles, and patient-centered advice and wrapping it into a 20-minute weekly podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you have found this podcast helpful, give us a five-star rating and review. This helps other people find our podcast. And make sure you share it with your friends. Thank you for your time. We look forward to serving you. Thanks for joining us for our last in our series of wellness habits. I know that you have made some good changes. We have been telling you about how to reduce your stress and how to get better sleep and how to become more active. So I really hope that someone somewhere that heard us. Yes, has, please has let us know. Let change. us know what your what your changes yes, are. Yes, let us We'd know. like make, to hear them. Make us feel like we, we've done something. <laughs> um, and, and as we continue to recognize that we've got plenty of changes to do ourselves, we've sort of saved the best for last because, yeah. boy, if you really want to get frustrated and overwhelm people, let's talk about what to eat. It is like every article you read or every year, it's a new fad diet, a new fad diet. Eggs are good. Eggs are bad. This will, this will heal you. This will kill you. (laughs) It's the same thing. It's very frustrating and, and it's a challenge. And I think people are wanting a very simple playbook. Um, wanting the, the list of foods that you're allowed and the list of foods that you're not. And unfortunately, that just doesn't exist. It's never going to. We didn't come into this world with directions. We don't know exactly everything we're supposed to do. And one person's list of foods isn't even the same for someone else. Mm -hmm. Some people thrive on certain foods and do really well with that. And other people's bodies are made differently. So for us to sit here, I hope you didn't tune in so that you could hear the three foods that'll save your life because yes. we don't know them. We don't know them. We're not <laughs> eating them, apparently. And right, because we, 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 don't, don't we don't know them. And, you know, the pharmaceutical companies would be upset with us if we gave you those. Yes. But they don't exist. The, the fact is that you've really got to figure out what's right for you. But there are some very basic principles that you can apply across the board. And so let us, and you know, of course, if you've got a doctor or nurse practitioner chatting, they're going to tell you what not to do. Mm -hmm. So let's go through some of the do's and the don'ts that um, you can put into your brain and know this is not a great idea. Um, As we do that, I want to remind you all, just because something's not a great idea, it's not packed full of nutrition doesn't mean you can't have it sometimes, you know, don't, what we don't want to do is make you feel like if I ever stray from perfection, then I have failed. The guilt shame cycle of food. Yes. That's what the diet plans live on. Yes. Get off that guilt shame train and let's just do the best we can. Mm -hmm. Let's be smart. Let's care about our bodies and, and really try to recognize that we are what we eat as cliche as that is. You can't put crappy fuel in the tank and expect the car to run. Yeah. And so we have people come in to us every day begging to be diagnosed with hypothyroid or whatever else. Uh, I have chronic fatigue. Um, And they are throwing so much junk into their gas tank and wondering why the car is not running. And I always say, if you put sand into your gas tank, would you go to the mechanic and ask why your car is not running? Or do you think you'd have an idea? Um, And so first, let's stop putting sand into the gas tank. So what are the things we need to avoid because they're never doing us any favors? Well, fast food, number one, anything fried, good, uh, that the oils, uh, anything. A lot of times my kids would be disappointed because they say it tastes good, but I'm like, it's killing you in the process of tasting good. And guess what? It does taste good. We're not here to lie. That stuff's delicious. Those people aren't a billion dollar industry because they took something that tastes horrible and, and fed it to us. They have figured out how to make it taste delicious and us want more and more and more. They even figured out how to give kids toys when they get it yes. so that they'll want to keep coming back. Um, they have they have convinced us that we need it every day. Yes. Um, but uh, there is zero nutritional value. And I have given lectures that are hours long <laughs> about the harm that fast food does. Um, but you think pink slime where you thought you were eating beef, but it was never a cow yeah. um, that exists in those hamburgers. There are, uh, you know, just to throw a few things out, um, there are things in the bread of buns. And, you know, what is one of the things that just goes bad quickly? Bread. 
Well, nothing goes bad quickly in a fast food arena because then you'd be throwing a lot of food away and losing a lot of profit. So the, they have things in the buns that keep them from going bad. Many of those fillers that keep the buns from going bad are illegal in most European countries because they cause cancer. There are so many things in fast food. We could go on forever yeah. about the harm that fast food does. And it's not just ordering right. It is the way that they make it from the way that it's grown to the fact that it was never actual uh, act, those nuggets were never a chicken. Yeah. That burger was never a cow. You can look up online comparing a hamburger you cook on your grill at home and a hamburger you get in a fast food restaurant. And the amount of difference in nutritional value, there's no vitamins or minerals, no zinc, no anything in the burger at the fast food place because of how they're processed. So you are missing, that food is completely void of nutritional value. Um, and who knows what else it's doing. Lots of cancer causing agents, lots of things causing heart disease and very addictive. They put lots of extra chemicals in there to make lots us eat more. Sugar. Yeah. Uh, of course, patients and people will say, well, eating on the dollar menu is, you know, it's cheap. And I'm like, well, of course it is because long-term you're going to be paying so much more for your health. If yeah. you eat that mess, Do you know what's not cheap, cheap now, <laughs> a triple bypass. Yes. That's not cheap. That yeah. costs a lot. And that's where you're going to end yes. up if you eat off the yeah. dollar so menu every be, day. Yes. It might be cheap now, but it will not be cheap later. And there are healthy foods that you can eat inexpensive. Now the thing, the difference between, like you said, the buns from fast food restaurants versus the broccoli in your fridge is that you actually have to cook the broccoli in your fridge and not throw it out. A lot of patients say, well, I bought the stuff, but then I didn't, um, I, you know, I had to throw it out because I wasted money. And I'm like, because (laughs) real food goes bad. Bad. The food that your body knows what to do with goes bad. So that brings us. So first fast food, never healthy, never good for you. Now, does that mean you can never have fast food? So don't, don't turn off the radio or stop (laughs) listening or throw your iPad. Um, you can have fast food. Look, we get that it's delicious. And and Amber and I are good Americans born yeah. here. We like fast food too. The stuff tastes good. But we are really disciplined about when and and how often and those kind of things. Of course, your children are going to like fast food, but you just got to keep reminding them, look, there's this food is totally void of nutritional value. So your body's not getting anything it needs, but you are getting happy because it tastes good. And sometimes that's okay. We can do that, but we're not going to do that frequent and we're not going to make, you know, habits and, and we're not going to call that a nutritious meal. Um, if, if we do it every once in a while as a treat, that's okay. But all in all, if you could cut fast food as much as possible, that'd be great. That's huge. Yes. Which moves us to like, what is real food? Yeah. So the other thing that you need to avoid, um, is fake food, processed food, food that sits in your pantry for 20 years and it <laughs> comes out looking exactly like the, the same. same. Yeah. Real food goes bad. It feels wasteful, but it actually goes bad. But, um, you know, those breakfast pastries that can sit in there forever, sugary cereals, um, all kinds of stuff that was simply made in a factory. If you cannot pronounce what is in the ingredient list. And the ingredient list. And the ingredient list is wrapping around the bottom of the box. You know, there's 400 ingredients and most of them sound like a science experiment. That is fake food. And a lot of those ingredients and artificial colorings and, and, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that I just think, why? You know, one time I heard, and I apologize if this is not accurate, but um, I thought it probably is. It sounds like it could be true that Skittles in other countries are not as brightly colored as in the United States because we like bright things. So what do we get? We get more red <laughs> dye number three and orange <laughs> dye number 23 and whatever else that we, that our body doesn't know what to do with. We don't need all those dyes. Yes. I do not care how bright my food is. Yes. You know, have you ever been into an apple and you can see the red bleeding into the white because it's been dyed? Yeah. And you're trying to eat an apple and do the right thing, but instead you're getting red dye. And so any time that we can avoid the fake stuff, avoid the fake stuff. And, you know, although I've just downed apples and we should be eating (laughs) apples, apples, um, if things don't have a label, if things grew from the earth, our body knows what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Our body just doesn't have the right way to process all of these chemicals. The chemicals are made to improve shelf lives and make things look pretty, look pretty and, um, and different things that sell. It's, It's all marketing. 
Um, but all in all, you know, the shopping on the outside, when we spoke with Becky and the first episode for this season, she talked about as a child, her mom taught her to shop on the outside of the grocery store. So really what that means is you're going to the bakery and you're going to the meats and you're going to the fruits and veggies. You're not going to the cookie aisle or the chip aisle and the soda aisle. Which brings me to another not to do. Oh, soda. Do not drink <laughs> soda. If you could do one thing to, to save yeah, small your step. life, if we could just get rid of soda. Um, and it's all of it. You know, sure, the diet doesn't have sugar in it, but it it's has all, it. all the, the other, other fake yeah, stuff that your body it. doesn't know what to do with. And they've done studies that looked at people who drank diet soda every day. Two diet sodas a day was an increase of four pounds over a year in one study. Now, they were diet sodas. It shouldn't have added any calories. But because the artificial sweetener and some of the other things in the drinks made people more hungry, made people eat more bad stuff, want sugars, changes your taste buds out to where when you're tasting things that aren't so artificially sweet and they don't taste sweet, so now you're just more sugar, more sugar... Mm -hmm. So it does alter you. It alters your brain. It alters your cravings. It is just with, not good. With our weight loss management um, here that we, we do at the clinic, one of the first things I do is I'm like, they're like, I don't even know. And we have lists of things, but it's not comprehensive. And I'll say, get rid of the soda, get rid of the sweet tea, and don't eat anything from a box or a bag. Like if those are just a few things you can start with. That's pretty simple. That's, that's pretty easy. That's doable. Now you got to plan and you got to shop and you got to have some good alternatives. Um, but if you can get rid of the sweet drinks and, um, and let me throw in there, juice is a sweet drink. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need to be giving our kids juice and we don't need to be drinking juice. If you even like orange juice, how many oranges does it take to, I I had a juicer once and I used it twice and I thought, what do you do with a juicer? How these people afford the juicing? I know. It's so expensive to get a little bit of juice. Yes. I spent a hundred (laughs) dollars on like a jug of juice (laughs) after I put all the fruits and vegetables in. And I would have been, and then you throw away all the, the fiber. Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was thinking, why don't I just eat the fruits and vegetables? <laughs> what am I but doing? <laughs> I would never sit and eat six oranges and that would be too much sugar in six in oranges. Sitting. Yeah. And, um, and yet it takes, you know, six oranges to, to get a very small glass of orange juice. So eat the fruit, don't drink the juice mm-hmm. and don't give your kids the juice and act like you just gave them fruit because yeah, you did it. You did not. So I uh, truly, if you drink water. Uh, get rid of, if you want to have an impact on your life, Absolutely. feel better, lose weight and make a Go to the bathroom difference. more regularly. That's yes. a big deal for so fiber and get water. get rid of all of your drinks and drink water. You know, look, I love coffee. I will have a cup of coffee in the morning um, and then I switch to water. And I, and I used to be a diet soda girl. It was free. It was zero calories. I could have all I wanted. You know, I grew up in the eighties and nineties. It was, it was all about the diet Coke. Yeah. Um, and then I realized like, what is in that? What are all these chemicals? I don't need this. And once I stopped drinking it a year later, I was going to treat myself and have some. And it's I awful. I burped forever. <laughs> it tasted not right. And I really was like, you know what? That's really not good. I had yeah. been, I've been able to reclaim my taste buds and realized that it, it wasn't even what I was thinking it was. Um, and then when I switched to water and I realized what feeling hydrated felt like, um, then I didn't want to be dehydrated again. It's yeah. a big deal. Your it's muscles ache, you have headaches, your energy's low, and all that could be dehydration. So track your water, get 60 ounces of water in if you don't have heart disease, kidney yeah, disease, absolutely. or some water restriction medically, um, or or more, depending on what you're doing. If you're outside or if you're you know working out or things like that, you may need more. But get yourself hydrated and get rid of the other drinks. Yes. And if you look at, you know, dropping a couple of sugary drinks a day could be five to 10 pounds in a month without making any other yeah. changes. Yeah, I have a couple of patients who have just done the one thing. I'm like, listen, if all you can do is replace the three sodas a day, the three Dr. Peppers a day, the three Mountain Dews a day, Red Bulls, like all of those drinks yes. with just water... And they'll drop weight. Our weight loss patients, like that's pretty much all they have done is just changed out the drink. Get rid of the drinks. And you know, I was bashing on soda, but then you said Red Bull. Um, (laughs) Oh my goodness. The The energy energy drinks. 
look, y'all, you don't know what's in those drinks. It is so terrible for you. And we have had so many patients where their heart rate is 50% higher than what it should be. Those things are killing you. Yes. Well, it's a crash and burn cycle. It is. So you, and then, you know, it is without fail. The person who does one energy drink starts doing two or three. Yeah. Because what goes up quickly comes down. Yeah. And then you need another one. Yeah. And and if you're all proud of yourself because you're not addicted to anything and you're doing three energy drinks a day, <laughs> guess what? You're, you're addicted to something. <laughs> Get off of that yes. nonsense and make a better decision. Yeah. So yes, getting rid of um, the sugary drinks is huge. Um, so we've said, get away from the processed food. I love how you say nothing in a bag or a box. That's a simple way to look at that. Um, look at the labels. If you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't be eating it. If it doesn't have a label, fruits and vegetables, vegetables you probably should better. be eating yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I love if it, if it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't eat it. Yes. Um, so a lot of getting rid of the processed food, um, and not just fast food, which just has zero nutritional value. But restaurants in general, if you eat out a lot and, I, and I'm not saying you shouldn't eat out, there's there's a great way to bond with people and enjoy and and have some fantastic cuisine. Um, but don't make eating out what you do Monday through Friday. Um, everything fixed in a restaurant is going to have a different content of fat and other things than what you fix at home. And so um, making sure if you do have a restaurant that you really have an idea, I think, I think it was great when restaurants had to start printing how many calories were in things. It was very eye opening. The portions are huge. So when you eat out, making smart decisions. So eat out less, eat out, enjoy it, do it less often. And when you do it, share, you know, don't, you don't have to get the appetizer, the meal and the dessert because you're out at the restaurant. Um, and share, you know, maybe you and your partner get, um, a meal and you split it down the middle, um, or you, that is your favorite dessert in the whole world. So you're going to treat yourself with that. And so you get a smaller, um, portion size. You mentioned something, um, about, uh, if, if you do it as a treat. And I think in at least our culture as Americans, it's, oh, it's your birthday. Let's go to dinner. It's, oh, you got A's on your report card. Let's go get ice cream. It's that we almost reward ourselves with food. We don't almost. We yeah, we sure do. do. We do. Yeah, we do. But we like, sure do. you know, we don't look at food as, like you mentioned, fuel or how to make us feel better because you have to eat to live. Yeah. So we, you know, we make it taste as good as we possibly can, you know, by adding all those things we can't pronounce. Um, and it's always a celebration. So I've challenged like some of my weight loss patients, you know, Hey, your birthday's coming up. How are you going to plan better instead of doing like the that. huge dinner and the big birthday cakes? Like by all means, if it's your birthday and you want a piece of cake, eat the cake, but like maybe go on a walk or a hike or do something like memorable as opposed to a meal. Because I promise you, you'd remember playing like disc golf with your family at the local park, uh, and something funny happen, or you do a friendly competition like my family would do. And as opposed to like, oh, where did we go to dinner? Who knows? What did we eat yesterday? Right. But you'll remember the disc golf game. So making right. nutrition what it is, it is fueling our bodies. It is not like, hey, let's go eat the appetizer, the meal, and then the dessert because it's your birthday. Right. Absolutely. And I think there's so many ways for us to break that cycle and not do that with our children too. Um, I used to get ice cream when I did well at the dentist. Um, that makes sense. How much sense does that make? (laughs) So no cavities here. I have some sugar. Um, and, and of course it was because I loved that. And, um, and my parents loved me and wanted to give me something that I loved, but I loved a lot of other things too. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think we can break that cycle uh, and not do that with our children too. Don't reward them with food. Don't uh, make food about uh, every holiday, you know, and we're going to have our favorite Christmas cookie and traditions and, and that's okay, but we can pull back or you can, you have your favorite restaurant that you go to for whatever um, is going on, but you also went and hiked Stone Mountain as a family or some other things that also can become your new traditions. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. Um, nutrition wise, when, like when you're planning meals and that's what, you know, you do have to eat to live. Um, and I think sometimes we don't plan well. I've done it personally, like where I'm just like, oh no, like I ran out of the house cause the kids are screaming and I didn't grab my 
my breakfast or my, you know, I typically would do a protein shake or some sort of protein bar and I don't have that. Well, then I'm starving and then I'm making poor decisions just simply because I'm hungry. I just don't want to feel the hunger. Yes. It's Um, so about planning Um, and having, and you know, we say don't eat processed food, but if you have a bar that you look at and it has a lot of natural ingredients and it's the best of all of the grab and go packaged foods, then that's good. Sometimes you're going to need to do that. We mm-hmm. have to we have to be ready to one day we just grab whatever. Um, and, uh, and I keep some hard boiled eggs, like on Sunday, I'll boil some eggs. And so in the morning I might just grab a hard boiled egg, um, and have that for breakfast because I don't have time to cook an egg. Um, lots of ways to just sort of be prepared yeah. for the week. Um, a slice of cheese, things like that, that you go, well, I like that it's natural food and, or, you know, some sliced up turkey or something that you could grab and go with. Um, and maybe on Sunday you cut up some apples because you're more likely to eat the apples or the carrots or whatever if they're already cut up and in a bag. Yeah. Um, and, and your grab and go foods can be real food too because it does have to be convenient. You know, mm-hmm. nutrition does have to be convenient because we all are busy and on the run. Mm-hmm. Um, so eating real food. So what can we eat and what should we be eating? I, you know, I love you saying that we have to think of this as the fuel that our body has. And so what, what is on the okay to eat? Well, I think as a society, the fad stuff, you know, like if you really break down all the fad diets, they're just real food. Like if you look at them, I mean, it might be a little variation, but essentially, it's real food. Um, you know, intermittent fasting has become popular. And it does work for some people. But for some people, it just stresses their bodies out. And yeah. it's just, it raises their cortisol level. So then they're eating more unhealthy things when they are able to eat. So I always And, and again, be very clear that, um, just as Amber said, just to kind of reinforce that, it's not going to work for everyone. So no. if your friend lost lots of weight on intermittent fasting and you do it and you're angry and hungry <laughs> and, and gain a pound, stop that. It's yeah, not, not going to work for you. So it's not, you know, every, every change isn't going to be right yes. for everyone. And of course, like you may not know what will work for you. And so some of that is trying to figure out is one of the things I like to do when we do weight loss management, and not that this is a weight loss episode today, but with nutrition is I tell patients we need to elongate the blood sugar curve. So where we are not crashing and burning from eating, you know, uh, carb- like quick carbohydrates or things that are the sodas, the things that are going to bring that blood sugar up and then make them crash. Um, that tends to be when you make poor decisions. So things like healthy proteins, um, and that can be, you know, peanut butter for some people that can be almond butter, that can be meat, um, like proteins, um, and then doing complex carbohydrates, you know, some people will say, Oh, well, I'll take out all the carbs. And I'm like, well, your, your muscles use carbs. Like you need some carbs sometimes. And that can be in the form of vegetables, but it also can be in the form of like brown rice or whole grains. Um, and so what we've said along eating real food matters. Um, and so I always will say, Hey, do some protein because that elongates that blood sugar curve. Um, and then if you want to add some carbs, to that, that's fine. But adding like healthy fats and protein is definitely the way to go. It's not fatty. It's, is that a word? Fatty? F-A-D-D-Y? Maybe I just made that up. Fat-ish? I don't even know. It's not a fat diet. It's a lot of fat diets. And so, you know, one, uh, fat diets that have existed for 30 years and keep getting a new name are low carb. Yeah. It was, um, Atkins, Atkins, then it became South Beach. Then keto is our current phrase for it. There's so many ways we call it low carb. Um, And uh, and low carb will help you lose weight. If you are trying to eat for weight loss, going low carb is not a bad idea. But I often say that my favorite low carb is the modified keto or the modified low carb where you take out all the bad sugars. We have so many bad sugars in our life. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think that our grandparents would have lost weight on a keto diet because they didn't need a keto diet. They were eating whatever was my grandmother farmed and they had some animals and whatever they grew is what they ate. Mm-hmm. They did not need to cut the Pop-Tarts out I of their diet. I would be in so much trouble if I had to grow whatever. <laughs> we, we would, it would be horrible. Yes, we would be hungry. We would be working for that food. You work harder than, than any yeah, of the food you get. Um, and so now we're in this very, you know, we have a lot of process and a lot of fast food. And, and when that is our American diet, 
then we need to cut the the bad yeah. carbs out. Yeah. So reducing your carbs is often necessary because we don't have an epidemic of diabetes and obesity because we have low sugar diets. Yeah. Um, we have very high sugar diets. So I think everyone could use to reduce their sugars. But if you showed up to first grade and you looked at the food pyramid, you saw fruits and vegetables in there. Please be very alarmed by any diet that tells you to never eat a fruit or vegetable <laughs> um, or that you're only allowed to have these five vegetables because they don't have very much sugar. Um, I don't want you to pick your battle on which vegetable is worse for you. Mm -hmm. um, really, there are so many other things that we can cut back. And if you want to have some carrots or some corn and they have some carbs in them, that's not a fight that I think you need to fight. Um, cutting back on eating out and processed food and sweet drinks is going to give you a lot of power and reducing all the refined sugar. Get rid of all of the refined sugar. Um, like you were saying that the things with more fiber in them, the crunchy things with proteins, those are going to be what um, is often called low glycemic index, meaning it prolongs that sugar curve. You don't have your sugar high and then your sugar low because guess what your body does when it's coming down from those refined sugars? It craves sugar and you're bottoming out and you start eating more sugar and you get on that sugar roller coaster that's hard to get off of. Yeah, I'll say stay away from things that are white. So white bread, white rice, white potatoes, and then white sugar. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of like if you're just trying to say, hey, I'm, I want to make a few tweaks. They've mentioned water. I can do that. Um, what are some other things? Like don't eat from the box, don't eat from the bag, and don't eat things that are white. Yeah. And really avoiding that is the way, don't eat the things that are white is the way refined to, sugar. Re to say refined sugars. Absolutely. To reduce those refined sugars. Um, so those, you know, are simple, eat real food um, and, and fix it to be delicious. You know, we should, our brain has a pleasure center that is, is um, set off by food. Food is delicious. It is pleasurable. It is something we should enjoy. I would not say take all the things out of your diet that make you happy. Then you got to go back to the stress episode yeah. <laughs> and figure out how you're going to manage your stress. You know, we should have pleasure in our life. We never as healthcare providers want to take that from you, but we have to find ways to balance that with making sure, first of all, that you're giving your body the nutrition. There may be times you say, I'm simply eating or drinking this because I need this in my body. I need this nutrition. Um, and, if you want to have something that's delicious and is a treat to you, then treat it as something special and sit down, take your time, enjoy it. I often say one bite of cake tastes the same as the entire cake. And so take a few bites, really take it in. Um, stop driving and doing other things while you eat because then you don't even remember that you ate. Um, really take some time and enjoy your food, fix it in a way that it tastes good. Do some, you know, I, I love when Becky was telling us that she would try new recipes and really make the food interesting for her and her family. And they all loved it. Um, I think you introduced me to a spaghetti squash and Amber told me once her kids had never actually had spaghetti. They thought spaghetti squash <laughs> was spaghetti because that was spaghetti in her house and they loved it. Um, and I love it. I mean, I don't miss spaghetti a little bit. I don't miss it at all because I love the spaghetti squash. Now, that might not be right for everyone, but keep trying the healthy stuff until you find stuff that you enjoy. And then um, just commit to one small action step in the right direction. So maybe you just say, that's it. I'm getting rid of the soda. I'm increasing my water. I'm, I'm eating fast food five times a week. I'm going to cut it to one. You know, whatever it is that stands out to you that would be a profound change, your body will thank you. I think my children do this. So I, I would assume other people's children, and I've probably been guilty of this in the past, but when you're bored, sometimes people will just reach for food because it's there. Yeah. And if you don't purchase it, like if it is not in the cabinet, it's not there. And I have, I have, I see pediatric patients and I'll have parents that'll say, oh, well, they just eat all these Pop-Tarts. I'm like, well, you're buying the Pop-Tarts. Like if it's not in the house, you can't eat yes. it. So giving options, you know, and, and it might take, if you have small children, like, of course they might balk at the initial, uh, where's my Pop-Tart mom, you know, but if you give them other options, like you were saying with Becky and recipes, if it's not there, they can't eat it. So then replace it with something that they do enjoy um, or you enjoy. Because yeah. And sometimes, you know, drink some water. You might not really be hungry. You might be bored or you and might... 
I say all the time, uh, food truly fixes one thing, hunger. Outside of that, food doesn't make you less stressed. Food doesn't make your emotions better for a prolonged period of time. You get the little food high and then it's gone. Um, food doesn't fix all the other stuff. So I think asking yourself when you reach for something, am I hungry or am I eating for some other reason? And then addressing that some other reason is really appropriate for a lot of people because we eat for a lot of reasons other than hunger. Yeah. And nutrition is just one aspect, um, of wellness. Like we've mentioned stress and exercise, or activity. I, sh- I like that. I should need, need to start saying that more. Activity, um, you know, managing your stress better, um, and nutrition, sleep, and sleep. Sleep better. is going on yeah. missing. And so we've, we've kind of just wrapped up, but they truly all go together. You can't really have one without the other, you know, and so t- looking at all of these you know, oh my goodness, there's four things they're talking about. That seems like a lot of steps I have to make. But one small step is really not that big of a deal. Just switch out one thing. Value your health to make the changes in the right direction. You don't have to, Rome wasn't built in a day. You don't have to fix everything. Um, But really looking at what are you eating? Are you getting rest? Are you active? Are you moving? And are you managing your stress as well as possible? And if you can just keep trying to improve in those areas, you're going to be healthy. Yeah. Um, We would love to hear if you guys are making um, improvements in your health by just these four little episodes that we've done. Um, And if you have questions, we'd love to have those too. Today's Tell Me Something Good. Kitchen gadgets. I am not a cook. I am not a baker. My kids call me the warmer upper. If it can be warmed up, I'm your girl. Recently, we moved and I found this amazing skillet. I've had this gadget for 17 years. Yes, my whole marriage, and I've never used it. It was in the back of a cabinet. The true saying, out of sight, out of mind, applied to this kitchen gadget. Since we've moved, I've used it at least once a week. My kids think I can cook. It's been amazing. So I'm challenging you to get in those cabinets. Use those kitchen gadgets that you purchase that have little to no use. Get creative. It is how you can keep your food choices new and exciting. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week.